Neil, well, thank you very much for joining us to, to talk about, I guess, the, the disappointing news. When we last spoke, you had some brilliant plans to get a season underway. And obviously the recent announcement that, that that now can't happen. Can you just put into your words and the Elite League words how and why in the end that, that your plans weren't able to come to fruition? Um, well, in my words, Chris, at the moment, all I can say is I, I, I think we're all very angry and um, we all feel we were shafted. Um, simply speaking, um, I think it's quite simple what's happened. Uh, it's sort of public knowledge where we were at. Uh, government, I, I'm on the page now, the government make an announcement. After much work that we did with the um, Department of Culture, Media and Sport, excellent work, submissions. Um, on the 19th of November, there is an announcement for the excellent government sport winter survival package for to help spectator sports in England. Um, you, anybody listening to this can go on the government website and find it themselves. Uh, quite clearly, ice hockey was allocated four million pounds specifically for the elite league. No one else, just the elite league, four million pounds. Um, we did plenty of work. We, we've been doing, in fact, tons of work over the last couple of months, the league and uh, the clubs. Um, we got it down to a very, very good structure. We were given uh, quite a good indication that the application that we put in would be uh, approved. Um, we did, like I said, a lot of work. We had it organised that it was either going to be two teams playing in Sheffield and two teams playing in Nottingham and possibly or four teams playing in one venue. We had everything put in place in the very secure COVID uh, bubble where all the teams would be staying in hotels, uh, totally secure uh, environment, the best that we could do for all the professional players that would be involved in this. We'd organised already internally a draft of all the um, professional players in the United Kingdom so that they'd be able to participate in this series. Um, everything was uh, in place and then we get told um, that we're basically all getting nothing. Um, we can't go ahead and in fact uh, unbelievably Chris, uh, I find this, given the, all the government uh, initiatives about behaviour and what we all should and shouldn't do the public in terms of uh, COVID, um, I then have heard that they are giving money to amateur sport for players where ice hockey is not their main job, but possibly uh, at their best their second job, um, which I find astonishing. Um, so we're very angry, to be mm. honest. We're, we're very angry and um, we're hoping that, um, you know, the situation, uh, might, we may end up with a slightly different outcome. I'm doubtful, but I, I honestly feel, Chris, that we have been utterly shafted. So just to kind of get people in the picture that the four million pounds was that totally taken off the table or was there maybe a chance of loans? There was a lot of, a bit of rumour about it. it uh, you know, could it have been a loan or, or, or what was the situation there? Well, um, for, for a start, from, from what I understand, um, obviously we had, I mean, obviously we were going to be playing these games at great expense with no income. So all along, uh, right through this process, we had been... Um, Made, we made it perfectly clear that without a grant to pay the uh, bulk of the cost of putting this on, um, it wouldn't be viable. Uh, we were told uh, up front that of the fund available, approximately 17% of it would be available in the grant anyway, um, and that it was discretionary for there to be uh, different amounts of grants depending on the proposition. Um, I think people who have been following this a little bit know, for instance, that basketball got awarded all of their money as a grant. They hadn't in fact started their season until they had, were awarded the money. Um, so there was a sort of con so it isn't beyond the realms of belief to think that you could get a grant um, for some of the money. Our grant application, as it happens, to put this whole event on was more than the 17% figure, but actually not an enormous amount more. Um, certainly wasn't anywhere near four million pounds. Um, so 
uh, what I understand from come back is we have been told that there's actually there's no grants available to any of the applicants and in fact um, there are no loans available either because in order for there uh, to be a loan available from what I'm led to believe um, they've not made that available to all the uh, applicants either so in fact there's no loan either so we've actually been given you know no grant no loan have you got any idea why for example you've been treated different to basketball uh no and i have absolutely no idea whatsoever why a process that we went through as per the government's release on the 19th of november uh which sets out clearly what we thought the winter survival package was about where suddenly the goalposts seem to have changed in the sense that it's money that was allocated in elite league that's suddenly magically gone somewhere else mm. um yeah i i I'll, I'll be honest chris i'm incredibly disappointed i'm disappointed for our fans uh number one because we were going to try to be putting on you know a product that we, we thought would be really good for all the fans of uh of um our teams i'm extremely disappointed for the professional uh, ice hockey players the British ice hockey players, because we were teeing this series up in such a way that they all would have had an opportunity to play top level ice hockey and obviously be paid for doing it um, for, you know, a period of basically a couple of months when they've had absolutely nothing to do since March 2020. Um, so I feel really um, upset. I, I just think it's, I, I, I think. I think people should actually, and, and certainly I am, I think we need to get to the bottom of exactly how these processes take place. I mean, obviously, um, we're not part of the establishment, um, but I'm certainly, um, I'm certainly interested in, in the whole bigger picture here, because I, I think um, maybe, you know, we may discover that ice hockey is just the tip of the iceberg for this kind of uh, um, procedure. What about next season? Uh, you know, the, 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 the press release talked about 21 22. Are you feeling confident at this stage that you can start a season in, in August, September 21? Uh, well, uh, yeah, it, obviously, like everybody else, we're following the vaccine news and all the other stuff. I mean, all of that news is, is good. Um, there's obviously quite a lot of talk about how long social distancing may or may not need to be in place. Um, we'll have to work out exactly how we're going to um, plan for the launch of the season in, in September 21, please. Hopefully that's, it doesn't get pushed back much later. I mean, I suppose it's possible it could get delayed slightly. Um, because I, I read that, you know, hopefully the whole adult population is going to be vaccinated by the end of the autumn, hopefully. Um, yeah, I, I'm confident that there will be, uh, I'm optimistic, is probably a better word. I'm optimistic that there will be fans in our building for season 21, 22, in which case we will be able to play, you know, games. Uh, how many people are in our building? I, I don't know, obviously none of us know that yet. Um, I'm very, very disappointed that this uh, government plan, which was to assist people affected directly, um, their businesses because of coronavirus. At the moment, we appear to be the only people in this sport um, who are absolutely getting zero from anybody whatsoever. And obviously, Chris, and I know it goes back, you know, but obviously we had games cancelled, uh, all of which, you know, we incurred all the, the costs of those games. We had all the players, the equipment, bought everything else. Um, so we have that issue still outstanding. We have the major issue for the league still outstanding, where it had to cancel the playoff final weekend 2020 at extremely short notice. Uh, all the monies from that final, which have always been fed back to the clubs, as part of our budget. So we're all still got that shortfall. We were hoping that this government package, as it's described by the uh, by Oliver Dowden, was exactly designed to help us out. And we now discover we're getting zero. Just with your Nottingham hat on, are you able to do any planning for next season 
yet in terms of recruitment or a head coach? You obviously don't have a head coach at the moment. Are you able to do planning and, and have you got thoughts in your head about who you want to lead your team next season? Yeah, I mean, obviously, um, we've still got Guy involved. Um, he's in close contact with Tim from last year, who was, you know, who was planned to come back to, to coach the team during this uh, series that we were hoping to put on next month. Um, yeah, they're, they're, they're having ideas. But obviously, at this stage, I think, I hope very much that in the next, by the time we get to the end of what would have been the end of season 2021, you know, early April, end of March, we'll have a much better idea about season 21, 22. We'll have a much better season as to when it will exactly start. Uh, you know, we'll have a better idea as to the number of people we should be forecasting might be able to attend games. Then we can set our budget accordingly. Um, and then we can move forward because we're really excited to move forward because we're very, very despondent with the fact that we now haven't basically played a game for what's basically 11 months and you know it obviously now it feels like we're not going to be playing a game for another what's it six months seven months <laughs> you know yeah yeah I mean might the league sorry for interrupting Neil but but you know you you know when the pandemic struck in in March last year the league was as good as it's ever been, I guess, since the, the yeah first... record attendances. And, and and in terms of the standard, might you have to see a drop in standard because of what's gone on in the past year and a bit? Um, I hope we won't have to, Chris, because I think what's happened out there in the hockey world, as in the whole live events world, is that is that maybe maybe what we're hoping is that whilst we may have obviously a lot less revenues, because if we've got a lot less people allowed in the building by definition, we're going to have a much smaller budget. I am hope. I think we're all hopeful from what we feel that that actually is, is actually that same situation is actually going right through the industry. So that we're hoping that there are the same kind of players that we've always had who are basically quite prepared to maybe receive slightly lower levels of remuneration given the circumstances. So I think we're quite confident, certainly from the feelers we've got out at the moment, we're quite confident that um, the same sort of players will be around because the issues we've got, Chris, everyone in, uh, right across Europe and North America has got exactly the same issues. So it's a, it's a, it's a global issue. And it's, the, and it's the same for everyone involved in the industry at all levels. I mean, we're all basically going to have to take hopefully a, a couple of steps back before we can take a few steps forward. So I'm hopeful that it's going to be an equally brilliant product. Mm -hmm. And just finally, you know, some, some clubs, well, all clubs won't have played, as you say, for probably 18 months. It will affect clubs in different ways because of the different sizes of the clubs. Do you feel confident all 10 clubs could start again when we start up again finally? Or, or, and I mean, I know you can't speak for those clubs, but you regularly speak to them. Is there a doubt that some teams might just not be able to start? Well, at the moment, Chris, we, we have a, a, a weekly board meeting every Tuesday. Um, we've had 10 clubs on the call since March. We've still got 10 clubs on the call as of yesterday. Um, I'm fairly confident that there will be 10 clubs going forward. Um, so I don't think that touch an issue. And, and to be fair, um, you know, we made a lot of very good decisions early about the season and not wanting to start with the possibility of there being fans coming later and all the issues. And I think we've been proved, thankfully, those decisions in hindsight have proved to be spot on. And we're not in the dire stretch situation that some other people may or may not be in other sports, for instance, mm. um, you know, but we're very, very, very disappointed that at this stage, and we're hoping that this will correct itself very shortly, but we're very disappointed that, that we haven't been the recipient of any assistance whatsoever um, from the government and Sport England um, for ourselves, which is, well, I think, really, you know, hopefully something that can be put right in the next, um, you know, month or so well something you say there just just to add one final question it sounds like although you're very despondent about it 
it sounds like you, you think there might be faint hope that you could get something sorted. Yeah, I think there's a faint hope that we might be able to get some sort of assistance to deal with the fact that we basically haven't been able to, uh, you know, play a game or earn hardly any revenues um, since March 2020. And obviously we've kept things out. I mean, we've had some brilliant support from, we've had fabulous support from our main sponsor, the Nottingham Building Society. We've had terrific support from fans in all the initiatives that we've been um, you know, hosting effectively across the last few months. Um, yeah, we've got a terrifically engaged fan base and, and, and we're in dialogue with all of our old sponsors who hopefully will still be around to sponsor us in the future. I mean, the arena has been terrific. I mean, I'm so disappointed for the arena because we had obviously a plan to start some activities going next month. Um, they were very, very keen to be involved in that process. Um, so I'm extremely disappointed for them that it's all come to nothing. Uh, and like I said, I feel, yeah, I really do. I feel very angry and I feel we've been absolutely shafted.